Nearly one in three Americans say it may soon be necessary to take up arms against the government, according to a new poll from the University of Chicago's Institute of Politics. Two-thirds of Republicans and independents say the government is, quote, corrupt and rigged against everyday people, according to the poll. Associate Editor at Reason, Liz Wolf, joins us now to weigh in. Liz, welcome. Thanks for having me. Now, of, of course, it, the government is corrupt and the system is rigged against the people. I mean, that, we, we should just establish that. That's not really up for debate. Uh, the whole, you know, take up arms kind of rhetoric. I do kind of roll my eyes at some of that, and I'm, I'm curious for your take, Liz. There's a lot of like, yeah, let's stockpile ammo, let's do that kind of stuff. I, I often hear that even in our own quarters, in libertarian cor uh, uh, corners. But it t usually the people who are most talking about that are like just very online and tweeting about it. And I'm like, are you really, are you really going to be of any use in like a fight or a militia or a civil war or something? You're just terminally online. I don't know, what's, what's your take? <laughs> I mean, these are the same people where, you know, they talk a big talk. This is 33% of people that we're talking about. And yet when it comes time to go through a TSA security line, they've like packaged all their gels in three ounce containers and they take their shoes <laughs> off. Like they're compliant and obedient, yes. right? A lot of them don't even homeschool their kids. They send their kids to government schools every day. Mm -hmm. Their actual revealed preferences, their actual behavior totally contradicts what they claim they're all about. So I don't really take it all that seriously, but I would say that I think the um, better thing for people to do would be to emphasize uh, figuring out how to fire government officials much more readily, much more easily. I think you know yes. we're going to have lots of terrible unintended consequences if people try to take up arms against the government. That is incredibly violent. I don't want to see that bloodshed. But one thing you could do is you could try to do more um, ballot initiatives, more referenda. You could try to fire your corrupt school board officials. You could try to fire your governor. California, actually, which is never really a bastion of liberty, has a really strong tradition of doing this. And more and more states should emulate that. Mm. Yeah, it seems like the question of like, you know, that they, they believe that it will it might soon become necessary for them to respond to some kind of government overreach right, in the most extreme possible way, right? They're not saying we want to do this. They're saying we can imagine a scenario coming down the pike in which it will become necessary for this to happen, but we're not there yet, right? Like that's kind of what what I'm getting off of this. I may be reading too much into yeah. it or be, you know, being too literal. <laughs> Although but, I guess then um, when will it yeah. be? So, okay, obviously the, the, our, our country is founded in a tradition of taking up arms against a tyrannical government. So we do have to keep that in mind. I would say the last two years have been rather tyrannical. Um, a lot of restrictions on people's individual, their right to gather, their right to conduct business, uh, have been, uh, their pers restrictions on personal liberty, you have to go outside in a mask, were just, as I'm some, the government attempted, the, the court blocked them, right, to have some vaccine requirements as well for a wide group of workers. It seems pretty tyrannical e to me, but uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know, Liz, is, it now, is now the time? <laughs> well, to me, the thing that's really disturbing that we, we encountered, I mean, I, I encountered this as a New York City resident and Batya did too. I really could not stand um, the requirement that people show their, vac their proof of vaccination upon entry into restaurants, especially when we knew that that was not necessarily a thing that indicated that they're not going to be, you know, viral vectors of transmission. I thought the most egregious thing of all was the degree to which this trumped uh, parental autonomy and parental rights by requiring that, you know, even very young children be vaccinated and show proof of vaccination in order to participate in any sort of social life in New York. Uh, to me, this is just like such a huge imposition uh, on people's freedoms. It's completely unjust. And so I can understand people having their hackles raised, a sense of, depending on where you lived and, and what was imposed on you, a sense of, well, are the courts actually going to serve as a meaningful stopgap and a meaningful preventative measure to ensure that that type of thing doesn't happen again? We're seeing this especially because now, like, L.A. County is reimposing mask mandates. This was something that we all thought was over, and now I'm sort of beginning to wonder, like, what will life in New York City look like if case counts rise? I mm -hmm. had thought that we were totally out of the woods here, but perhaps that's a naive assumption because there are really very few limits on the powers that the authorities that be in these really blue cities use to restrict our civil liberties. Yeah, and in L.A., it's it's Barbara Ferrer is the uh, assistant 
health director, whatever her title is, an unelected position with ve with huge responsibility over the COVID response. Um, people hate it, but she there's no accountability that she has, which shows, I think, the danger of having so many unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats. Our government has gotten so vast, has so many employees that are not elected, that are not subject to democratic, they're not subject to market forces or democratic forces. They're just, they're subject to no forces. They can't be gotten rid of. And that is, I think, undergirds a lot of this um, unhappiness that people have and, and the desire to rise up and do something about it, even if I think that would ultimately be fairly counterproductive, but we do need well, to change the system. And even the ones that are elected are so hard to fire. I mean, to me, the most heartening, but also the most disturbing example of this is the fact that San Francisco is basically a city in disarray and ruin. And what happened during the pandemic was children were kept out of school for an insane amount of time, much longer than other school districts. Um, and parents basically decided, in fact, a huge contingent of Asian American parents who were sort of neither left leaning nor right leaning, really, they basically decided, screw this. Uh, the school board was busying themselves with renaming problematically named public schools. And so ultimately voters decided to fire three of these school board officials. To me, that is, it's horrible that school board officials uh, squandered their responsibility and, and squandered their ability to affect positive change the way they did. But it's a really heartening sign that voters were just like, nope, we're not tolerating this anymore. So we need to be doing okay. that in as many places as possible. I, ha I have to push back just a tiny bit. I, I so admire the energy you guys bring to this and your outrage at the civil liberties that have been taken away from Americans in blue cities. And I totally agree with you. However, as somebody who knows people who live in Canada and Israel and is watching the footage coming out of China and knows people in the UK, like, guys, we had it really good, even in blue cities. And I, I'm not saying that to Compared defend to them, any yes. of the terrible. Yeah. Like in Israel, you were not allowed yeah. to walk further than six meters from your home. Can you imagine any American, anybody putting up with that? Never, never. You look at what's happening in China, the way they're treating people in Shanghai, right? This mass. So I, I, that is not to justify True. any of the horrible stuff but just i think that that's what the people in this poll are looking at they're saying look we mm. you know, first of all i'm sure most of them are you know in red states where they're like no lockdowns right <laughs> but they're looking at what's happening in china they're looking at what happened in israel and in the uk and they're saying that is a scenario in which i can imagine things getting so bad that i would have to pick up arms and say no more i, I don't think that it's in response to yes the errors that were made here and yet again like i really respect the energy you guys bring to this like every <laughs> infringement on civil liberties is terrible, no, but there is a scale here. Yes. You're, no, you're <laughs> well, not wrong at all, Bacha. Australia, in Australia, they solved this problem uh, very shrewdly, right, by doing gun buybacks several years before to ensure nobody in the right. citizenry was armed, <laughs> and then they did the really severe and restrictive lockdowns. So it's a little right. bit of this one-two punch type situation. Well, and that is, I totally agree with you, though. Yeah, that I is mean, an argument for horrible. having an armed uh, populace, not because we're going to actually have some revolution, we're going to throw off the government, like, no, that's not going to happen. But because in America, there's a little less political will to impose really tyrannical stuff on totally. people because totally. the people could make it difficult if you did. They don't totally. want that to, to the degree that you see it in other countries. And, uh, and I, am, I am thankful for that, uh, that we have this tradition of individual liberty and of people you know, defending their liberties, even if we absolutely don't want it and don't expect it to ever really come to the, the nasty side of that. I think this is why libertarians are so sensitive to any encroachment on civil liberties, because we see it as like, especially when you look at Australia's example, or you look at the degree to which the CCP has just, you know, utterly right. stripped people of anything resembling any form of freedom. Um, you know, they don't have academic freedom. They can't learn the things they want in universities. They don't have freedom of mobility. Like, it's, it's absolutely horrifying. But I think this is why I'm at least so sensitive to every single, even very mild seeming encroachment, because I just wonder you know, what types of things do we let the government get away with? And this is why I have a lot of faith in our court system. I have a lot of faith in our ability to recall elected officials and a lot of faith in our court system. And then when I see people and their rhetoric about, you know, this court system is illegitimate, that's the thing that really bothers me because I think, okay, well, we have this very delicate checks and balances, push and pull type system in the US. And I place a lot of faith in that, but it makes me very concerned to see many of my fellow Americans not placing much faith in that anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The Supreme Court uh, put an end to one of the more 
insane to me, COVID uh, policies, the broad vaccine mandate for however many, well, thousands and thousands and thousands of workers, and uh, Supreme Court said no to that. So that was good to see. Uh, Liz, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And we'll have more rising in just a second.